This episode of Critical Hit is being brought to you by Loot Crate. Subscribe now by going to lootcrate.com slash critical hit and enter our code critical hit to save an exclusive 30% off your subscription. Uh, let's see. Here we have one from Bree. Um, she has a couple of questions. She has some really good information. In order to keep things short, I'm not going to read a bunch of paragraphs, but we do read them all. Back in season four, when Trell was teasing Ket about his egg being his baby and the others teasing him about being at the one he knows about, Ket says that he couldn't have had children with the, uh, with the partners that he's had at that point. People think Classic confused question. and the issue was dropped. Are we ever going to hear the answer, Ket? <laughs> <laughs> um, I can't answer that. I know exactly why I answered the way I did. Uh, I don't know if Rodrigo wants me to do that in character as an answer or if I can explain that right now. You can explain it. We get we actually get that question a lot. That's pretty. Similar, and I, yeah, and I don't I don't feel that it is like a uh, story break. Part of the reason why it was dropped as quickly as it was is because I don't really see it as like hugely central to Ket's character. So ex- explaining it is fine. So as we saw in the. Uh, when Ket came back in the last season uh ket was raised by his grandmother uh part of that is because he lost his parents due to other random fighting in the backstories uh and because of that ket does not have relations with anybody that he could actually father a child with all right there you go everybody yeah but that so that's not the what I think what people are specifically <laughs> a- asking is does does Ket have, for example, same sex relationships? Does Ket have relationships with like tieflings who are incompatible with, you know, pr- half Eldrin DNA? Like, oh, 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 what's he? Ket does, does not have relations story. with people he cannot father children with. <laughs> okay. Ket only has relations with people he can father children with. Okay, gotcha. So Kit's a loner. Wow. No. Well, that's not what he's saying. <laughs> that's not Tiefling what he's saying. Leave example. that yeah. up to you. Uh, yeah. Because Rob is terrible at flirting. Ket <laughs> is terrible at flirting. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so every oh. time Rodrigo's puts a female tiefling into the uh into play, I have utterly failed at attempting. <laughs> wow. Does that mean Sakar should be really good at flirting? Hmm. I don't know. Well, I, yeah, I guess well, we haven't seen it uh, uh, yet. So. Not if not know. if it comes not if it comes down to a dice roll. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's that you, lettuce jack to flirt. You meanie uh, pants, pant. I'm hurt. I think that's I a good guess, answer. Uh, I think he could do like the too. like the muscle guy at the beach kind of flirting. I mean that he'd be good yeah. at. <laughs> yeah. We do have one more question from Bree. This one is for Randis. If Randis creates a hat of disguise for assistant, mm-hmm. would assistant look like a very small humanoid, or could he be a cat? Wearing a bonnet. <laughs> if he can be the recipient of sending, the hat could work, right? I, I, that's mighty specific. Could could it could happen. Be a cat wearing a bonnet? <laughs> I mean, if it's a hat I mean, of disguise, and if it would work for the assistant, I think he could be any of the above. So, given cat could or not cat, the approval. assistant could actually be a hedgehog <laughs> wearing a straw boater. Yes. Oh, make it happen. Yeah, Bree. There you go. A couple of good questions. A couple of good answers. Listeners, if you have questions, podcast at Majorspoilers.com, and we will answer them in a future episode. This episode of Critical Hit is being brought to you by Loot Crate. We've talked about Loot Crate before, but have you heard of Loot Gaming? Loot Gaming is just one of the many curated collections that Loot Crate puts together and delivers to your door. Now, I know you're listening to Critical Hit to listen to us play a tabletop game of Dungeons & Dragons, but... I have a feeling many of you like video games. So I'm, I'm playing right now uh, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Yes, I'm a little behind on that. Don't uh, don't get too bent out of shape. But it's a lot of fun. I've been playing the Spider-Man game on the PS4. And uh, I've got some others. Uh, I've been playing maybe some Fortnite. But I know that you love video games. And we do too. And Loot Gaming will deliver a box to your door every month filled with video game goodness. This month's theme... Welcome to the Nightmare. Fight back against malevolent forces with gear from Soul Calibur 2, uh, Silent Hill, the Psychonauts, and Cuphead. What comes in a box? It just depends. Every month has got some new stuff. This month, there is a really cool, I like this a lot. It's a Doom bottle opener 
where the bottle opener is in the shape of one of the monster heads, and it's got magnets on the bo- back so you can stick it onto your refrigerator. It looks really cool. It's really heavy. I know it's going to be opening up a few bottles around this house. There's also a really cool Sonic the Hedgehog uh, Metal Sonic collectible figure, and I got a Metal Gear Solid pint glass that has the fo- Foxhound l- uh, uh, emblem on it. There's also a t-shirt that comes in your size. It's so cool, and it is cool because Loot Gaming curates and designs everything themselves. You can't find these items anywhere else. No matter what you geek out about, Loot Gaming is for you. There's over 30 million crates sold, and as I mentioned, if you uh, want to go check out one of the other uh, gaming crates or the other crates that uh, Loot Crate has available, they have 16 other awesome crates. This month, though, I think you're going to get a kick out of the Loot Gaming Box and the Nightmare Collection. Almost perfect for uh, Halloween in October, right? Everything that I mentioned in my crate, it's got to be over $60 of stuff. $60 of stuff packed into this box, and you're paying less than $29 a month. You can't lose. And when it comes to video games, everybody loves to win. So what are you waiting for? Subscribe now and give yourself a birthday present every month. This Nightmare Crate, it's going to sell out. So you must order by this week to guarantee yours before it's all gone. Get the best surprises each month from the largest geek and gaming subscription company, Geek Out In Style with Loot Crate. Subscribe now by going to lootcrate.com slash critical hit. Enter the code critical hit to save an exclusive 30% off your subscription. That's right. Go to lootcrate.com slash critical hit. Enter the code critical hit to save an exclusive 30% off your subscription. Thank you, Loot Crate, for sponsoring this episode of Critical Hit. Welcome to Critical Hit, a major spoilers podcast. Thank you so much for downloading and checking us out this week. We have a lot to get to, so let's just jump right into it. We're prisoners on a sailing ship, Rodrigo. <laughs> uh, yes, in a sense. Uh, so last time... On uh, Critical, critical Hit. hit. Critical on hit. Critical Hit. Some prisoners were put on a ship. <laughs> um, but now... Those jerks. It's, yeah, it's more like house arrest than anything um they're allowed a lot of freedom i'm guessing everybody's gonna get their gear back on and everything Mm -hmm. correct yep uh so why don't we do descriptions while we're here um we can start with uh sakar all right sakar is uh in the words of brian since day one a human (laughs) <laughs> Question mark? There's uh, a lot of that going around. There yes. is a lot of that going around. Uh, six and a half feet tall, uh, brownish skin, black hair. It's important that I mention the black hair. And uh, positively beautiful, gorgeous Nesmithian sideburns. Uh, once he is geared up, Sakar will be in his shimmery, green, black, snaky looking armor with snaky looking, snaky stuff and a, like a little, you know, fang accents mm-hmm. around the neck and shoulders. Yep. He is carrying a matched pair of super cool swords, one of which is not currently on fire, but looks like it might have been recently or, you know, sometime in the last 25 episodes. I can't remember the last time we were actually in combat. And he has right now uh, his game face on, meaning that should any scary marrow show up, it is his job to stand there and mean mug them like Diamond Dallas Page in a very angry fashion so that they know not to cross uh, Little Sparkle and the Nearly Dead Men. <laughs> I actually heard to somebody refer to the group as the Sparkle Tones, mm-hmm. which <laughs> nice. uh, which which I don't hate because it sounds like a different band, right? Mm-hmm. Plus, mm-hmm. It's, yeah, it's, like clearly the the show has gotten a lot more synthy since right. uh, <laughs> since we came back to the Astral Sea, so I can see it. Yeah, sure. yeah it's like it, it all sounds like, like the Sparkle Tones is like a funk seven. band. Yeah. yeah. So you're they told us to give up the funk, and they really disco. Meant it. Uh, it's like I'd a say, synth wave thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. You yeah, know, someone like, brought uh, Twilight Sparkle back recently, so that's always a, a good one. Yeah, I'm a little yeah. mad about that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, big well, dude, let's black hair, big swords. Let's, let's go ahead and do a little sparkle next. Uh, so as kind of height differentially as possible from Sakara's uh, little sparkle, because she's only a little bit more than five feet tall, 
Uh, she's got a mix of green and black feathers, long green beak, um, blue eyes, putting her uh, black leather armor over like a pretty simple tunic. Um, and looking happy to also have a, a dagger back at her side and some keys around her neck again. Um, she's got uh, also like matching leather boots and um, long kind of vaguely talony nails and a sweet flame tattoo. Yeah. All right. Let's do Cat. Uh, Cat stands at about 5'10", wearing a black leather coat and leather armor with the the typical card suit motif in the collar, uh, brown hair, a goatee, dark eyes, has a big stick. It looks like it came off of a jungly tree. Mm-hmm. Are, are cat's ears pointed? Sort of. A little like more than like your average human, but not like one is pointed. One not is elfy. Yeah. Oh, like Stephen Colbert. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he is a wonderful fake creature. Yeah. Um, you want to describe Cat's familiars? Uh, guy is. God, when was the last time I actually described Guy? Season two. Oh, well, guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was at least season three because Guy yeah. didn't exist in season two. <laughs> uh, and guy is a uh, book imp. He is. Chimp, about the size of a chimp, uh, built like a capuchin monkey, uh, orange fur with uh, blue kind of stripe over the eyes and red glowing eyes. And then occasionally I'll summon a bird, uh, a a, uh, eagle, a bird of prey, solid black uh, across the entirety of its body. Uh, who's next? Let's do Orem. Orem is an Eladrin. He stands about 5'8". He's like 100 pounds, dripping wet, if that. He is wearing, um, some very fine, like, silken robes with intricate details. And even though these have been wadded up and tossed around, and Orem's been wadded up and tossed around, he still looks immaculate as his flowing (laughs) hair just kind of... Just looks like he just walked out of a of a salon. Has a bit of a rugged look to him. Now. Yes, and he's got a sword on his side, and he's got determination on his face. Or maybe that's yeah, dirt. To... It's hard to tell. I think that's actually ketchup. <laughs> it was a long trip through the boardwalk. It, yeah, and that um, elven granola is pretty bland. All right, and then we have Randis. Hello. Uh, Randis is a human type being, uh, or something like that. Uh, he's a little shorter than average, uh, has a fairly unkempt wild hair. Uh, he, uh, wears a thick, uh, leather, uh, jacket that's been all sorts of patched and mended many a times. Uh, it's, has, it's covered in all sorts of pockets and bandoliers filled with different widgets and potions and bottles and this very miscellaneous bric-a-brac. Uh, it's got a backpack that uh, often has a little crab or spidery type robot creature who's peeking out. Uh, he's uh, got a big, uh, solid uh, metal arm, uh, carries around a crossbow with a slide of uh, various bolts in it. And that's him. Okay. That may be our best descriptions in a long time, guys. Good work. We are awesome. Yeah, I think everybody did a good job. Um, Also here, a big red toad monster with big (laughs) long claws and sharp fangs and weird little eyes. What's his name? Stabums. Stabums. Uh, so there you guys are. Um, Orem receives a message. Oh. Through ascending. Okay. Put it on the yeah, I chat. Kinda, I kind of start kind of looking around and I kind of whisper. So Sarsa says do nothing. 
The Don's Arena will intercept. Otto will handle, handle the transfer. Once again, do nothing. Okay. All right. I don't want it to be too loud. Do I do I tell uh do I tell Stabums or not? He's, yes. He's under Is our gonna, employ. Yeah. I mean, you've already paid him for the day. Doesn't have to continue with us. Do you want? So do you want me to tell him? Sure. Okay. Just hang tight, stab him. Everything's gonna be all right. Okay. This is just quiet. Keep it between us. Don't let anybody know. Okay. And I look out our porthole. Okay. Uh, it's the Astral Sea. Vast and mysterious. Ah. Uh, the sea. The astral sea. <laughs> I remember in my younger days, I would travel across the astral sea, scouting new lands, finding new <laughs> new treasures and things to explore. And now look at me. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm narrating my future bi- biography. Okay. Now that Scar's ruined it, uh, Orm sits down. <laughs> Well, I'm going to check out the rest of the ship while we wait for our intercept. Are you going to be sneaking? No. I think that would get me into more trouble. Then I'll accompany you. I figure we might as well uh, make uh, good use of ourselves in the meantime. Mm -hmm. Help out where we can, I suppose. We're told to do so. So might as well. Yep. Try to stay on the good side of the captain and anyone else who's amenable. Sounds like a plan. Okay. So Sakar and Little Sparkle go investigate the ship. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, um, neither one of you have been on a lot of astral vessels. So this one is very different from the Dawn's Arena. Um, its engine appears to be completely different. And its uh, make is definitely incorporates a lot more metal than that strange stone that a lot of uh, ships are made out of. Um, wherever you go, the crew gives you the stink eye, but they don't really say anything. Um, unless you like try to go into like actual quarters area that aren't yours, they seem to really not like that. Mm-hmm. Sure. Try to avoid that if possible. Yeah. It really doesn't take very long. You know, it's like, here's the brig where you guys were at. It's like, here's the rest of the hold. Here is, like, where they're, like, cooking some meals. And then, you know, you end up back on top. There's a helm area, and there's a uh, kind of a mast, which, you know, isn't attached to anything, uh, Mm -hmm. with a crow's nest on top. Like, it's attached to the ship, it just, you know, there's no sails. Right. So it's just like a big lookout. Cool. And uh, while you guys are going around, looking around, everybody else gets stuff to do, which is either helping out in the kitchen or, you know, cleaning something or, like, making some knots. I think Orm will use this time to learn how to make some knots. <laughs> like an actual Your merit badge. Yeah, I gotta get earn that merit badge. I'll make a potato peeler. <laughs> Rand just invented the salad shooter. <laughs> Basically true. Yeah, I wouldn't put it past him. He slices, he dices. Yep, Randis Randis invents uh Julian Fries. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I well, loved uh, her in Boogie Nights. <laughs> While everybody else uh, finds something else to do. And uh, after a while, up from the crow's nest, uh, you guys hear someone shout, Captain, there's a ship approaching! And the captain goes over to the... And the, the person in the crow's nest is like pointing in a particular direction. The captain goes up there, pulls out a looking glass like a little telescope um and or i guess a spy glass a looking glass as a mirror um and uh looks over and uh scratches his chin 
and uh, looks up and says, Crow's Nest, do you see any colors? And he shouts down, looks like they're flying Arathis' colors, Captain. He's like, yes, that's what I thought as well. Scratches his chin, looks over at whoever's nearest. We'll say Orem. Orem waves back at him. Hi, how are you? You know anything about this ship? Uh, ship. Um, I squint out to the direction he's pointing. Can I borrow your your spyglass, please? He hands it to him. I look through. Ah, oh, uh-huh. I don't know. Maybe there was a change in plan, and I don't know. I don't know who that is. Doesn't look familiar to me. Mm-hmm. The captain walks over to the helmsman and uh, tells him something. The ship starts to slow down and kind of turn a little bit. And uh, pretty soon, you guys uh, can spot the Dawn's Arena in the horizon. The crew is pretty tense, but the captain seems okay. He uh, looks over at whoever, whoever's nearest, probably Ket this time. Yeah. And he says, why don't you all go wait in your quarters just until this is all settled? Is that necessary? Well, here's a ship I didn't know about out of nowhere. Conveniently at a place where no one should know we're at. So I'd say so. It's that or the brig. I'm just asking right. you to take your compatriots to your quarters. All right. Is mo are most of my compatriots within earshot of this? Yep. All right. Yeah, we can we can go to the quarters. Thanks. Were there portholes in the quarters? Yeah, but they're on the other side from where the Don's Arena is approaching. I load up my gear and get ready to move out. <laughs> Very nonchalantly, <laughs> like, I don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, as you guys go down, uh, you can hear the Don's Arena's uh, mechanisms mm-hmm. uh, approach and then stop. Uh, you hear some, like, probably gangplanks being moved around. And uh, then after a while, there's a knock at your cabin. Is there any type of uh, peephole to where we can check? Not really. Yeah, open the door. Okay. Orm opens the door? Yep. It's uh, one of the crew. He's like, all right, come with me. Okay. Come on, guys. All right. You follow him up. And uh, they're standing on the deck of the ship that you're currently in is uh, Captain Otto Jemhand. uh, And next to him is uh, what you recognize as a little lantern archon. Mm. And they seem to just be like finishing up some business with the captain. And uh, the captain turns to you guys and says, well, uh, looks like everything's in order. So uh, go ahead and board this nice gentleman's ship and then we'll be out of each other's hair. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds like a plan. All right. (laughs) We disembark. Okay. And guys walk across. Yep, walk across a gangplank to the Don's Arena. After you guys are all through, Otto goes over. Gangplanks are removed. And uh, as the uh, Dreaming Ruby pulls away, you can hear the captain say, Well, we've got two more days before anybody expects us, so let's go find something to do. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. And then there you guys are at the Don's Arena. Uh, Captain Otto looks at you guys, says, well, you all appear to be in one piece. I don't know what that is. Points at Stabums. <laughs> but whatever. Um, he uh, motions to the uh, Lantern Archon and says, uh, this is Gardenia. We were supposed to pick her up after the 
Toad's Boardwalk, but uh, we had to beat it out of there. So we figured while things were happening, we could just go pick her up. Thanks for uh, taking the initiative on that one. Sure. Um, Gardenia, who has a woman's voice, it's a very pleasant one, um, says, it's very nice to meet you. Uh, Nice to meet you, too. Where are we taking you? Oh, I'll be going back to your base with you. Oh, okay. I'm, I will be overseeing things uh, from Arathis's perspective. Uh, hmm. Hmm. Lovely. Rodrigo. Mm-hmm. What does a Lantern Archon look like, for those of us who don't recall exactly? Uh, lantern it's a lot like archon, a Will-O-The-Wisp. <laughs> yeah, a Lantern Archon looks like a little sphere of light. Cool. In this case, golden white light. And it's, you know, about the size of like a softball. So, Gardenia, are you informed as to the state of our current situation and everything that we have uh, accomplished so far? I've been briefed on pretty much everything except your latest venture, but I have put together that it didn't go very well. No, it really didn't. We were unable to secure a permanent treaty with Gamma. Well, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Still... Uh, there's plenty of gods still out there. Yes, yes. We can also probably safely cl- cross Rafaga off the list. Really? Not necessarily. We yeah. failed to make a deal with Gamma and made an enemy of him, so why not try for Rafaga? It's an interesting point. We definitely didn't gain the boon we wanted there, but I don't think no. that's a burnt bridge. Nope. <laughs> We can tell her we tried. Huh. Oh, you laughing at Burnt Bridge because she's a goddess of fire? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And at least on the good side, while he's not on our side of the treaty, he's not necessarily on the other side either. No, he does not seem like a team player. So are we actually going to Shalai? Or... No. Oh, that's good. Says the captain. So we, uh, we're heading back to Rutile Island. All that, all that's been sorted out. Uh, okay. Were we actually being taken to emissaries or of Arathis? Uh, technically, yes, but who knows what port they would have decided to pull you into? You could have been immediately intercepted if that was the case, or if yeah. they went to the wrong one. Yeah. But yes, well, that we like found a out about pie. this. We found out about this through Arathis's emissaries. Was it just a matter of uh, predicting any likely course to intercept us then? Well, there's a fastest uh, course between the Toad's Boardwalk and Shalai right now. So we just figured out the most likely place where you would have been. Right. Well, where are to now? <laughs> Do you, I suppose you want to go back to Rutile? We should probably head back to the island. It sounds like you guys need to go through a debriefing. Yeah. And uh, maybe a resupply, too. Agreed. Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, Stabums. Hello. Uh, is there anywhere in particular you would want to go? Uh, not really. I've been banned for life from the boardwalk. Uh do apologize for that. Man, that's uh, all right. It would have been the pit otherwise. I suppose. Uh, well, I guess. Uh, would you mind staying under our employee? Nope. Well, we can probably get you some work. Sounds good to me. All right. Uh, I guess to Rutile Island. <laughs> all right. Are your people on any other... Do you know if there's more of you anywhere other than the Toad's Boardwalk? Oh, I'm sure there are. I know there are plenty in the Elemental Chaos. What about any other god that might have utilized some of you? Like you mm, were working on a, the Boardwalk? I don't know. Okay. So uh, the captain goes up, starts up the Super Solenoid. Pew, 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 pew. And yep, rings pocket of energy up here. Pocket of pocket. Of the ship sails through them, 
Stabbums goes, ooh. Yeah, it's pretty impressive, right? Ooh. <laughs> I'm just picturing a big Gila monster every time you speak. That's that's not, that's not, that's not odd. That's yeah, that's not, not far off. But, like, but red. Yeah, just bright red. Uh, definitely, you know, Gila monsters kind of have like these like thick stubby arms. Um, Slod have like long, spindly, like clawy, like hag arms. Ooh, salamandry looking. With, like, yeah, with like claws at the end. That sounds um, gross. Yeah, these guys are not attractive. No. Even to other Slod. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they want to lay their eggs in you. Yep, yeah, exactly. That's why there are so few of them left. Uh, you guys pass through the rings, and soon enough, you find uh, Rutile Island in the distance. And you guys sail in into the secret cove and into the docks. And uh, when you arrive, uh, Zarza is waiting for you at the dock. I bet she is. Does she look angry? She looks stern. But she always looks stern. Yeah, it's hard to tell. Uh, Why can't she ever look port? Hmm. Boo. Not in the astral sea. <laughs> that's, a, that's a boat joke there, Rob. <laughs> yeah, I, got, I, got a, I got a brief chuckle out of, Rand, out of Brian. <laughs> yeah, that's all you can ask for, after that's, all. That's better than most of my jokes. Oh, extra boo. Don't you boo at me. You're the only one who got it. No, I got it. I just refuse to. To oh, acknowledge been no it. To, to since acknowledge. 2005. It's fine. I would say at this do point we, there's a 50-50 chance if I got yes. it and no solid or didn't get it with you, Matthew. Do we really need to stop and discuss every <laughs> out-of-character joke? We really kind of don't. We'll stop. Uh, so, so Sarza does yes. not look any more angry than usual. Correct. Her resting cleric face is strong. Pretty much. Okay. <laughs> um, so as you guys uh, disembark, she raises an eyebrow at Stabums and uh, says, what's with the slod? They thought he was with us. Yeah. I see. So now he is. Randis is paying him. That's good. Also, right. we don't have any gold. Thought some backup muscle might help. Uh, figured, you know, you can have him lug things around here or fight some spiders um, if need be or just any menial work. That's not Somewhat a bad a, idea. Permanent spider duty is probably a really good idea. Yeah, Stabum says, like, I like spiders. Do you like killing spiders? Yeah, I like to eat them. Oh, well. Oh, perfect. Like, well, have we got a banquet for you? Seriously? All the spiders you can eat. Uh, you're still going to pay me, though, right? Yeah, we can pay you, right? Can yeah, look yeah Zara says, you. like, yeah, we can we can fit him into the payroll. That's not a problem. Considering oh, the, we, the gaps we have. We got robbed. We lost to the spiders. Mm. Oh. You got robbed? Yes. Mm. Yeah. More fined. Strong oh, arms. Right. You guys uh, make it to her office and she kind of uh, gets everyone inside and uh, um, she turns to Randis and says, uh, why don't you uh, ask your employee to uh, to stand outside and maybe keep track of something? Yeah, you want to Keep watch out here. Not keep watch, Sarza says. Fair enough. Uh, Keeping watch implies that he might harm someone if they try to come in. Uh, go. How about you let us know if anybody wants to come in? That sounds good. He turn. He looks at Randis. Yeah, uh, do that. Okay. And he goes and stands outside the door while you guys file in. Uh, Sarza. Sits you sits at her desk. You guys can all find places to sit. Um, and she's like, "Okay, last I heard, 
you were heading towards Gamma. Um, you had spent some time in the boardwalk, figured out some stuff there. Um, next, I heard, was from Otto. They tried, Gamma's people tried to board the ship, so he beat it out of there. That would be accurate. Things went okay until they didn't. Negotiations we tried to went get, poorly. We tried to get Rafaga's head. There was some disagreement over who owned said head. I see. Needless to say, Gamma won't be signing our treaty. Well, that's unfortunate, but uh, I don't suppose we really went into that one uh, thinking that it was in the in the bag anyway. Very uh, true. Although... <laughs> Yes, I was going to say, although that one seemed to be more in the bag than some of our other options. Well, um, aside from some new personnel, is there anything else that we learned? And and she holds up her hand. I don't mean lesson wise, you're all adventurers and adults. <laughs> I don't any any anything that you would have learned from this. I, I get I mean, intelligence wise. Uh, well, Gamma intends to keep Rafaga's head in order to mock her. her. <laughs> if you have anyone infiltrate the island, uh, be aware that the boardwalk is littered with Will-o'-the-Wisps. Yes, uh, you had said that in your first uh, dispatch. All right, great. I just wanted to make sure we knew that. And also, um, Gamma didn't ever really go to sleep, is my understanding, after the last war. Well, he must have in some way, because we know that the boardwalk was consigned to shadow. Mm. So um, what exactly that meant, I'm not really sure. Gods are complicated and unique. So maybe Gamma was conscious this whole time. Um, it's good to know. Definitely, we'll pass that along to uh, Barrett. But uh, I don't know what we can do with that information right now. Still good. I'm glad. I'm glad we know. What else? Gamma said that he contacted Arathis. I don't know who I actually contacted. Yes, we heard about your uh, situation through Arathis, um, or through Arathis's clerics. Uh, they got in contact with our new recruit. So that's kind of where we had been monitoring the situation too. So whatever old channels um, Gamma has to Shalai, they continue to work and they continue to be within the province of Arathis. Recruit? Gardenia. Ah. Uh -huh. Good to know. Yeah, Gardenia comes to us from Arathis. Um, we had had some issues getting in contact with them now, it shouldn't be an issue. She has pretty much a direct line to Shalai leadership, as well as allowing us to, say, requisition supplies, um, assuming they can get them to us somehow. It's just another point of communication, another point of intelligence that we have. Certainly helping to keep track of what's going on in Shalai is good. That does sound promising. Uh so, we are in need of new supplies. The money-wise and mm -hmm. component-wise is, I imagine they've been added to Gamma's pool. <laughs> At least our bones weren't. Yeah. So not necessarily a large sum, but enough for the expenditures. Well, that shouldn't be too big of a problem. We're actually uh, we're working on uh, getting a pretty sizable sum. Uh, it should be here soon. Um, it's coming to us from uh, one of uh, Erathus's temples off in the far bright, so it might take a few more days to get here. But for now... Um, we can probably swing whatever you need uh, most immediately. 
I think we're compromised in some way. I don't know how. Yep, that has been an ongoing concern. Uh, why do you think that now? Gamma knew what we knew about Rafaga's head, and it could be that my source also showed the information to him, but it could be that he learned it from someone here. I see. If that was the case, then it points to only a strict sabotage, wouldn't you say? There is no gain for uh, most agents to give Rafaga's head to Goma. And it seems very yes. unlikely that Goma had embedded agents in this organization, which began before he was even awake, or at least out of shadow. What about Bexka? Who is that? Uh, a Babao that we briefly met with on the uh, boardwalk. Uh, he did have... Did we... Uh, this one's out of character. Did we actually tell Bexka explicitly that we were looking for the head, or just that we were looking for something in there? You did not we just, tell him that. Yeah, we just said it. that we wanted something out of the vault. Yeah. Okay. Oh, never mind then. Hmm. Yeah, but I agree. If he knew what was in there, he could probably put that together. Uh, and you all talked to this Babao. None of you implied what exactly the prize was? Not that I can think of. I think we're being cagey about that purposefully. That's good. As long as there was no uh, no vector that might have, uh, say, spoken to the Babao in private, they can be uh, very wily. She, like, looks at Orm, looks yeah, at Orm's Orm sword. Yeah, sword. told you we should have gambled that thing. Hmm. Eh, it wasn't necessary. Did it? Do you want to ask your friend? Sure. I pull out the sword. Okay. Hey. Hello. Did you tell Babao what we were after? Um, maybe. I mean, I tell the truth. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. But also, that was a long time ago. Uh, not that long ago. Yeah, like two or three days ago, right? Yes. Yeah. I remember having a conversation, and uh, he was like, Oh, you have a lot of potential. Evil potential. And then, you know, we talked about what we've been doing. And I told him, Oh, you know, there's these like guys that are psychic like you, and I stabbed them and shot fireballs at them. And I was like, Oh, it's very interesting. You know, it might have come up. Okay. Yeah. Don't don't tell anyone what our what we're doing ever again, please. Got it. My metaphorical lips are stabbed. Thank you. Maybe. Hmm. It's possible, but it's also possible that we have some kind of leak that led us to we've been in some ways undermined at our last two stops. And that wouldn't be the sword's fault. No. So it's possible they're unrelated. Like I said, it's also possible that Alusha sold the information to someone else. Um, but I think we have to act with much, much tighter information control going forward. Well, so assuming your uh, contact sold the information to someone else, if you sold it to Gamma then Gamma would have no reason to detain you unless you were in there trying to get Rafaga's head. Oh, we were in there trying to get <laughs> Rafaga's head. Got it in one. I see. Well, unfortunately, that doesn't really point to a leak. It might point to your contact, but your contact may have just sold the information to two separate people. Yes. But yeah, the uh, my my evidence for the leak is that he managed to know about the head immediately, like as soon as we were there. Which is, again, I guess he could have gotten it from. No, we only ever told anyone that we were looking for something inside the vault, not specifically what it was. Uh, we told him specifically what it was. 
We told well, he Scratchums did first. We did tell Scratchums. Well. And we did tell Gamma. And it did take us a day to get day and a half to get from Gamma's back to the tea house. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe I'm just jumping at shadows. No, but uh, you know, we were attacked when we were at the Hexagon Towers and we have run into some other issues that seem to indicate that either someone's a step ahead of us or that someone is leaking information or, you know, we are just incredibly filled with bad luck. And Orm looks at Ket. I doubt that it's bad luck, but there are a lot of actors involved. If you just assume that anybody who has sided with Asmodeus is trying to exert influence wherever they can, just that would be an almost unmanageable amount of possibilities. On top of that, any other interested parties that might think that they can get ahead um, can cause further problems, plus the potential of having interested parties within our organization. But we try to go through a very thorough vetting process, um, and there is not a lot of access to external communication devices, plus... Rutile Island is naturally difficult to scry, so it makes it difficult for me to assume that it's uh, one of our, anybody below management level of, at our organization. Yeah, agreed. And you vetted everyone who's here personally? Everyone. Which uh, brings me to another point. I am going to need you, uh, Randis, to transfer your... Uh, Slad's contract to me so that we can put him in the payroll and then I can go about uh, a rigorous interview process to make sure that he doesn't have any or that he's not going to pose any problems. Sounds good. And then if he's working for me, then I can just take him somewhere else and fire him or whatever it needs to be done okay. if it comes to that. Sounds fair. Uh, all right. Uh, do uh, do I need to write a contract or just tell him or what do I? You can just you can just tell him. Okay. Uh, yeah, tell him that you're transferring his contract. All right. Yeah. Uh, want me to do that now? Yep. Uh, is there anything else before we do that? I think I know what our next couple steps are, but I'm gonna double check on a few things before I say anything. All right. Well, get some rest. Uh, do some thinking, and then when you figure out what your next move is, let me know. Sounds, Sounds good. good. And she stands up from her desk and motions to Randis and goes out the front door to transfer uh, Stabum's contract. All right. All which right. is pretty easy. He's just like, okay. And then that's that. Sounds good. And she like has him follow him right. to work out the details. Uh, so do you want to rest before discussing further plans or... Uh, we do need to rest. We need to get whatever we can obtain, and uh, then I think we should head out as soon as we've uh, rested. Okay. That's, Sounds good. Yeah. Do we, um, real quick, hud- huddle up here, everybody. Uh-huh. Do, <laughs> do, do we need to maybe keep our destinations as a that's what I was implying. In, in that's between us and only the captain of the ship. 100% what I was trying to do just yeah. now. Exactly. Possibly. But we've also been running into issues, not sending any words ahead to our prospective allies. Hmm. Should we start actually sending out on voice to... I mean, we're going to be there before they are. Yeah, that's uh, the thing. Is our, We're so fast. Do we? How do we? You know, send, send an envoy to each god now. We'll oh, still... that's smart. And uh, offer up our interest in talking, and then some of them we can, you know, we, let's let's draft notices saying that we wish to talk to all of them and ask for times at their convenience or proper protocol to set them up. Yeah. Rather than just showing up on their doorsteps. That seems like a good plan. Let's go talk to Barrett about that. 
I imagine some of them might actually eliminate themselves in their response, saving us a trip. Possibly. So we're going to give up the ship for a few days? Possibly. <laughs> no. Well, how are the other envoys going to get there? The other oh, I assume there are ships. magical... Yeah, exactly. Other ships, magical methods of communication. If we're going but to one we can, location... Again, talk to our resources about the best way to do this. I don't really know astral sea etiquette. We might have to wait here or find other endeavors in the meantime until we hear back from any of our envoys, but... Wait, I... why would why would we wait? I thought the plan would be for us to go to one location and send envoys yes. to the other town. Yeah, exactly. I, I think that's reasonable, that we can go to our next location and send envoys so that we've got this process moving. Sounds good. I guess my only problem is they're still running on regular ship speed well, and we will still beat them there we Honestly, spend I mean, several on, days with gamma exactly if we go to see phil and nozoa next we send the envoys at their regular speed however long it takes us to go there we may or may not have information by the time we're done at any given location and we can move on but yeah i think it, it doesn't hurt us to try to make these arrangements yeah, I think it's a good plan. Let's uh, do that. If we do end up beating some on the way, well, what we're do we do? In a worse position than we already have been that doing. Is, that is true. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So we are currently at this point going to go rest and resupply and sharpen our wits and swords. <laughs> okay. Um, anybody like not going to go rest immediately? Yo, I'm going to go speak with Barrett. Okay. Uh, you find her at the library. Oh, welcome back, Kat. Hi. Uh, so, you still willing to uh, join us on this next one? Um, yeah, certainly. All right. Uh, we are going to be leaving... Uh, as soon as we're all rested and have what provisions we can scrounge. Okay. Um, so if you need to do anything to get ready, you may start so doing so. Uh, also, do you know of any way to contact the gods other than direct approach at this point? Hmm. I mean, technically speaking, one can pray and they might listen, but that has a lot of, uh, is really caught up with the type of prayer or ritual and whether they were paying attention at the time and or, or interested at all. So that is a very unreliable form of communication. Obviously, you could always send a sending if you've met them before, but I'm guessing this is you're asking for gods that you have not yet met. Correct. Furthermore, contacting a god directly might be seen as um, rude. We've also come across as rude about approaching with no uh, announcing or envoys. Yeah. That is a problem. Um... Well, I know for a fact that we definitely don't have uh, 10 more ships or however many uh, envoys you might think to send. Um, so the possibility of sending a delegation out, I don't think we have actually even have the, uh, a staff large enough to do that and still keep Rutile Island going. Um I suppose if you have a place that you know you're going to go and it's re within a re reasonable distance, you might be able to send an envoy, uh, sort of uh, send an envoy one spot ahead of where you're planning on going. I can work that out. I guess that's the best we've got then for that. Uh, and they need to be close by. Otherwise, we're just going to beat them there no matter what. Yes. 
Uh, well, thank you for that assistance. Uh, we'll see you in the... What time of day is it, even? It's it's uh, it's like late... It's like early evening. All right, we'll see you in the morning. Uh, some... Yep, I think uh, most of my preparation is going to be getting some sleep, which I haven't done in a while, I guess. Wow, all right. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Good night, Barrett. Good night. I'm going to head to Pixo. Okay. Uh, Pixo is like rolling up his charts and putting them away. Pixo. Ah! Oh, hey, cat. <laughs> Still a little jumpy? Uh, yeah, I'm kind of jumpy. Uh, what's the three nearest woken gods to us right now? Uh, let me see. He like starts pulling out charts again. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I would say the three closest ones would be uh, Malgubliet, uh, Rafaga, and Great Tiger. How far are Thien or Mesco? Hmm, let me see. Uh, Mesco is close, all things considered. Probably less than a week out. Um, Thien is pretty far away. All right. Uh, Looks like you were getting ready to turn in for the night, so I will let you be on your way. All right. Watch out for spiders. They've been getting up here so far? Oh, yeah. Great. We may have found something of a solution for that, at least. That's good. What, uh, wait, what is it? Do you know what Slod are? Yes. Is a red one. Oh. All right, but uh, if you end up having to, like, find a wyvern to eat that Slod, I'm out of here. And come winter, it'll die off. <laughs> That's fair. Solving the problem once and for all. <laughs> Good night, Pixo. Good night. And goes back to putting his charts away. Uh, where do we go? I have a question. What's up? Um, I've got something that requires a focus worth 5,000 gold pieces. Mm-hmm. Is um, What can that be? Can that be something that I already have that's already worth that? Or do I have to have something crafted? Uh, I think it has to be something unique. Let me... Let me see if I can pull up rules on uh, focus. Um, I just need to find out if focus is expended when it gets used. Oh, here, here it goes. Uh, I have to scroll all the way to the bottom. A mirror or crystal ball worth at least 5,000. So a mirror or a crystal ball. Okay. Next question. Mm-hmm. Uh, are gods colossal size or are they large size or where do they fall in in size whatever they feel like yep okay. it depends on what they are right so gamma was definitely at least huge mm-hmm. although probably larger if you count the tentacles um cord was large you know he was just like a little bit bigger than you guys right and uh, the bronze prince was medium size so okay all right uh, so before before uh, Randus uh, heads off to bed, I pull him aside really quick. Hey, hey. Randus. Yeah. Um, you think you could craft me a little crystal ball? It's kind of got to be a really fancy high end crystal ball that will fit. Uh, not like a big one, the size of your head kind of ones that you see, but maybe one that'll fit into the palm of my hand. <laughs> And I mean, it's got to be fancy. I, can, I basically would need a crystal to carve it from, wouldn't we? I, I a think... crystal ball can be made of glass. Okay. Um, so you can, as long as you're like doing some like really high end techniques, and you do have a kiln here, mm. so you might be able to make one. I know you're tired, okay. so you can do this in the morning. I think, but the sooner we could get that, the better. Uh, yeah, we can probably make something like that, I guess, as long as we uh, 
can uh, clear the materials. Uh, the beach is full of sand. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I'll see what we can do if they're, yeah. <laughs> and this is such a special island. I'm sure this is like high quality sand, too. <laughs> the, the island is made of giant crystals. There you go. Mm, okay, then. There you go. Right, well, giant anti scrying crystals, though. Oh, boo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Make the crystal ball out of a mesmeric egg. Yeah, and make it those, are gonna, those are going to be difficult to work on. <laughs> make, I'm, make, I'm it, make it. Oh, here's a request. How Let's about we hard boil it first? How about we make it look like a uh, <laughs> like a spider, and the crystal ball part can be the the big abdomen part. You just want to be able to use spider, <laughs> spider points part. on this? No, not spider points. No, uh, spider points. I'm saving for something else. Okay. But uh, yeah, I can probably do something like that. You're saying, Rodrigo. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can figure it out, and it can okay. come from whatever you want. If you find some non uh, scry problematic rutile, that's fine. If you want to just make the glass yourself, that's fine. Mm-hmm. You you guys can do it as long as you fork up the resources. Yeah, so it's got to be a focus worth five thousand gold pieces. Okay, well then, yes, I can subtract five thousand from what I've already melted of uh, Sakar's armor. <laughs> okay. We got 5,430. Okay. I probably That's need to go more. see somebody about getting After some that. other materials or components. And I still got things I could probably melt down okay. if we need more. Because I'll need at least 7,000. An old pair of goggles I don't need since I got an Ion stone now. There you go. Take those out of your scrapbook and <laughs> melt them down. <laughs> Yeah, it wouldn't be crazy for everybody to go through their inventory and see things that they're not using anymore anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I do have this amulet of protection. I'll hand that over here, Randa. Plus one. That is a plus four. Oh, so that could actually be worth some. Uh, Worth 45,000. It'd be a 20th of that? A quarter of that, I think. A 25th, yeah. Or, yeah, a quarter of that, yeah. So eleven thousand two fifty. Yep, that is gone. Pow! Which after making a crystal ball and then adding that, we'd have six thousand five hundred fifty-five. Maybe we can talk to um, Sarsa and uh, get a payout from Petty Cash. Okay. Thanks, Randis. Have a good night's sleep. You too. All right. Everybody goes to sleep? Yes. Yep. All right. You guys get a full rest. Hooray. Yay. I haven't had one of those in like seven episodes. Yep. Did we so, not come off of Supreme Exhaustion just to get our brains beaten in by guards? Yeah, I think that was, part of the, that was part of the mm-hmm. reason why we failed, right? Because yes. of our uh, low rolls yep. with those minus twos. So another oh, yep. question then, Rodrigo, if we were uh-huh. out basically all night, if we're, if we're knocked out, that doesn't constitute a full rest. Uh, no, you did okay. not get restful sleep, unfortunately. Okay. Um, had you like been knocked out and then laid out like in a bed or something. Ah, uh, okay. And like had your wounds taken care of, that probably could have constituted <laughs> restful night, but being thrown in a dungeon does not unfortunately yeah. let you get a full night's rest. <laughs> okay. Nope. That's bad. Yep. Don't use dungeons, kids. The more you know. All right. Well, it looks like we got a full night's rest. Uh, Why don't we take a break this week? A little bit shorter of an episode, but I mean, that seems like a pretty good natural break point. Uh, Someone had asked me a while ago, as we get closer to our 500th episode, they said, oh, I've been loving every minute of Critical Hit. By the way, how many minutes is that? Well, if you think that on average, our shows are about an hour and you could on the on the low end. And I think probably if you averaged them all out, it'd probably be about an hour and a half per. Um, You're looking at something like 500 hours of content over the last 10 years. That's a lot. That's a lot. It is. Uh, Or what is it? uh, 30,000 minutes? 30,000 minutes. Of content? 525 minutes. You got there first. Uh, Sorry. Sorry. Yep, so, uh, yeah, that's a lot of good entertainment uh, that we've been uh, bringing your way. And if you've enjoyed (laughs) it, even just a little bit, maybe think about giving a little back so we can reach 500 by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash majorspoilers. And if you're brand new to Critical Hit, welcome. 
I hope you're enjoying the story and uh, it's coming to a coming to a conclusion soon. Yep, we're all going to die. Yeah, we are. I mean, <laughs> the world ends. That's that's the way we these games end. Right? Coming like we did. Yeah. All right, yeah. everybody. Thanks so much for checking us out this week. Podcast at Majorspoilers.com. If you have any questions, and until next time, here's hoping all of your dealings with Gamma are critical hits. <laughs> <laughs> This podcast is copyright 2018 by Major Spoilers Entertainment, LLC.